In terms of uh, mechanics and electronics, again, gaining um, maximum marks, I've been through a lot of these points that are currently here. So use free body diagrams where possible. Use your con correct conversion of units. This is where students really fall down. Um, they forget to put the units in the, in the right context. So what I mean um, for that is if you've got an answer in megapascals, you need to produce um, and put your units in um, Newton millimetres. Put all your answers in a clear logical form. All these things we're allowed to give marks for. So they're all in the marking guidelines, so make sure that they're there. In the communication section, what we're looking for specifically here is your understanding of AS 1100 standards. What you should be using is your drawing equipment so that you're getting the overall shape and proportion in the scale that's given for your drawings. So although it is an engineering sketch, it still has to have those proportions. So please, when you're setting it out, set it out using your drawing equipment. Um, you can do that as a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you still have to have that scale and proportion there. Also in the communication section, this refers to your engineering report. When you study for your HSC, please go through your engineering reports and understand the structures that are in there and be able to show and speak to the fact that you need to be able to synthesise information. You need to know all the components of what an, engineering, uh, an engineer would do in these particular circumstances. Lastly, I'd just like to mention that there is a, a wealth of resources out there for engineering. There's a, a massive number of texts, there's heaps of websites, obviously the Board of Studies is there. On this website I've put down a list of, of different um, websites that are available to you that you'll find useful. Um, also there is a document on there which summarises, uh, or gives more detail in fact, of the information that was presented here today. So that is uh, available for you to download from this website. Thank you very much. As an engineering teacher, one of the areas that students most struggle with is truss analysis. And in particular, the truss analysis related to the method of, of sections. So what I'm going to do now is just to go through a method of sections example for you that you might be able to play over and over again to assist you to actually learn this content. Consider the truss shown in the diagram. Note, a Warren truss is an equilateral triangle. Therefore, the angles in each corner are 90 degrees and each side is the same length. For the purpose of this example, we will make the sides 2 metres in length. The method of sections uses a cutting plane that passes through the three members of the truss. One of these members must be the member being analysed. The reactions at the supports are calculated if required. However, in this example, the reactions RA and reactions RE have already been resolved. Only the part of the truss which is not grade is considered for the calculation. For this part of the truss to remain in equilibrium, it is necessary to apply three forces, X, Y and Z, to the three cut members. These forces will act along the axis of the members and normally are assumed to be tensile forces. Since the forces are assumed to be tensile, they appear as arrows moving away from the joint. If they are compressive forces, the arrows would be towards the joint. This is important to remember and will be revisited later on. To find the magnitude of the force in the cut member CD, that is force X, take the moments about the point where the other two members intersect, that is joint B. This will eliminate forces Y and Z from the calculation as both pass through point B so there is no turning effect about that point. Only external forces acting on the left-hand section of the cutting plane are used in the calculations. That is, RA at 220 kilonewtons, F1 at 250 kilonewtons, and the unknown force X. Please note that the point of turning B can be on the opposite side of the cutting plane as shown, but only the forces on the left of the cutting plane can be considered. To find X, take the moments about B. The moments are equal to the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance, that is, M is equal to FD. The sum of the moments about B are equal to zero, and for this purposes, we have made the turning force clockwise to be the positive. 
force RA is equal to 220 kilonewtons and is two metres from point B. Therefore, the first moment arm is plus 220 times two. The plus symbol is used as RA will cause a rotation force in a clockwise direction. Force F1 is equal to 250 kilonewtons and as it is cutting the equilateral triangle in half, its perpendicular distance will be one metre. Therefore, the second ar moment arm will be minus 250 times one. Note the negative sign in front is due to the fact that the moment arm will be turning in an anti-clockwise direction. This is opposite to what we assumed, therefore it is negative. The final moment arm is created by X, which is our unknown. Its perpendicular distance are from these two points shown in the diagram. As the distance is not specified, it has to be resolved. This is a commonly asked question in engineering studies as it is utilising the student's knowledge of known ge geometric functions. For example, um, this ratio equates to the square root of 3. However, you could use normal trig functions such as d is equal to 2 sine 60 or d is equal to 2 cos 30. In all cases, they will equal 1.73 metres. We can now complete the third moment arm, which is plus x times 1.73 is equal to zero. Again, the plus sign is because the moment arm is travelling in the positive clockwise direction. Since the truss is in equilibrium, it should be equal to zero. To find the unknown, we start to rearrange the equation. We leave x times 1.73 to the left of the equal signs and move the other two moment arms to the right of the equal signs. When you do this, you must reverse the signs so that we now have x times 1.73 is equal to minus 440 plus 250. To leave x by itself on the left side of the equal sign, we must divide both sides by 1.73. This eliminates the 1.73 from the left and the equation becomes x is equal to minus 190 divide 173. Therefore, the magnitude of the force in member CD is equal to minus 109.8 kilonewtons. The negative value is significant in truss analysis. If you remember earlier, I stated that we assumed that the force in CD was in tension, and we drew the arrow pointing away from the joint. As it turns out, our assumption was wrong. This means that the member is in fact in compression, as the arrow should be reversed and drawn towards the joint. Therefore, CD is equal to 109.8 kilonewtons and is in compression. Now I have demonstrated how to find the force in CD, use the knowledge that you have gained to determine the force in member AB, that is, force Z. Remember the rules. Take a cutting plane through the three members, which includes a member to be resolved. Then take the moment from the, the point at which the other two members intersect. That, of course, will be joint C. I will leave you now to work out the magnitude and sense of the members in AB. As an extension, I would like you to consider member CB. We take the cutting plane through the three trusses as before. However, when we try to find where the other two members intersect, we notice that they are parallel and will never intersect. So how can this be resolved? In this case, we do not use moments to find the magnitude of the force we use the sum of the forces vertical equal to zero. As the vertical components of X and Z are equal to zero, as they are horizontal, the only unknown is the vertical component of Y. Using the knowledge you have gained about component forces in the prelim year and HSC year, attempt to resolve CD. See if you can get the correct answer of 34.6 kilonewtons in compression. Mm -hmm.